Imagine creating wealth without having to worry about researching and analyzing thousands and thousands of stocks. Sounds impossible? It is not. This is what we are going to talk about. It's called index fund investing. Index funds are simple, easy to invest in, transparent, and one of the best investment vehicles to give good returns. There is no need to buy and sell stocks. You don't have to worry about researching and analyzing stocks because by investing in index funds, you're essentially investing in a basket of stocks. In this video, I'm going to cover everything about investing in index funds. What are index funds? What are the different types of index funds? What is the composition of index funds? How do you invest in index funds? What have been the historical returns of index funds? And what are the things that you need to keep in mind, the do's and the don'ts of investing in index funds? Now, as, I, as you watch this video, you might get some questions. Questions are great. Pop them in the comment section and I'll be sure to answer you. If you like this video, please make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel. Over here, I'll do a lot of asset breakdowns. We'll go deep into investing, uh, investing across different assets uh, in order to make you financially free. The purpose of all these videos is to help make you financially independent. So you are doing the things that you like to do, that you want to do, not because you have to do to get the money. That's essentially what financial freedom means to me. What does it mean to you? Let's get started. What are index funds? Put simply, index funds basically comprise of the market, right? They are a basket of stocks, different stocks that make up the Sensex market or the Nifty 50 market. And I'll get into each one of these separately. But to give you a quick overview, you need to first understand what is active investing and passive investing. What is active investing? Uh, a fund manager, say a mutual fund uh, scheme that you are investing in, the manager needs to select and take a lot of decisions around which stocks to buy, how much to buy, when to sell, how much to sell it at. Uh, the components are all different and they need to be actively managed over a period of time. The purpose of active investing is that you're going to get above market returns, right? Otherwise, why would you spend more money uh, and give it to the fund manager so that that fund manager delivers you above the market returns, right? Now let's flip this around and let's understand what is passive investing. Passive in uh, investing is what index fund investing is all about. Over here, the fund manager does not have any control over what stock goes into the fund that is decided by the National Stock Exchange, uh, how much proportion of the fund should invest in each stock. That is also that decision is also taken away. Essentially, what the fund an index fund manager does is it mimics the market. So what are the different index funds available for investing? I'm going to share four index funds that I track and I look at and I invest in. In India, you have two primary ones, which is the Nifty 50. Uh, it is basically, I'm investing in the top 50 companies in India that are listed on the stock exchange, right? So Nifty 50 is a composition of the top 50 stocks by market capitalization. The second one is the Sensex, right? Which is a composition of top 30 companies being traded in the Indian Stock Exchange. So these are the two ones in India. Uh, outside India, primarily in the US, I look at uh, NASDAQ 100. Uh, NASDAQ 100 comprises of the top 100 stocks. Majority of them are tech stocks that are being traded on the NASDAQ Stock Exchange. And then the last one is the Standard & Poor's 500, S&P 500. This is an index fund which uh, tracks the top 100 companies that are listed on the US Stock Exchange. Uh, here's a quick chart which kind of explains, you know, what are these four different funds and what you can get out of it. I always say, you know, do your research before you invest a single rupee that you've, you know, earned by working really hard. Uh, so let's understand and break down uh, how do these index funds work. For a, as an example, I'm going to take the Nifty 50 Equal Weight Index Fund. 
right now within nifty 50 you have different varieties of nifty 50 index funds um, and here you can take a look at the august 22 uh, fact sheet by nse uh, which kind of shows the different uh, nifty 50 indices that are available for you to invest in now let's take the example of the nifty 50 equal weight index fund uh, it's what it says, you know, uh, it comprises of the top 50 companies uh, from India by market capitalization, but they are equal weight, meaning uh, each, each of the 50 companies gets equal weight within the index fund. Uh, here's a quick overview of what are the returns of the uh, Nifty 50 equal weight index fund. If you want to just get a sample, here are some companies that are part of the Nifty 50 Equal Weight Index Fund. You have ICICI, you have Titan, uh, you have Bajaj and a few others right? that you can take a look at. Always, always before you put your money down and before you invest your hard earned money, go through the investor document, go through research, understand what it is. Now among this, what you'll also find is a word called rebalancing. What is rebalancing? Uh, essentially, uh, some companies, the share prices of some companies might go up or might go down. Some companies might grow faster or might grow slower. And therefore, remember we said Nifty 50 is going to be the 50 companies by market capitalization. So if a company gets added into top 50 by market capitalization, the other company has to go down, right? And so this is known as rebalancing that the National Stock Exchange does semi-annually. Before I move on to, you know, why should you invest in index funds? Let me give another example of uh, a type of an index fund, which includes uh, total returns index. Let's take the example of Nifty 50 total returns index, Nifty 50 TRI. What is TRI? Essentially, what we are saying is that, um, say 20 out of the 50 companies that are part of the Nifty 50, they give dividends each year. Now, Hindustan Unilever uh, gives out dividends each year. So what happens to that dividend? Uh, because you've invested in this index fund, should you get the dividend back into your bank account? Or is it going to be reinvested so that your returns compound over a period of time? Now, essentially, uh, what, uh, what you're trying to say or what are you doing by investing in Nifty 50 TRI is that you're telling uh, that uh, whatever dividends come from the companies that are part of the fund, they should be reinvested in the Nifty 50 fund, thereby increasing the total returns. Uh, research has shown that roughly uh, TRI gives 1.5% more returns annually than any other fund and that's primarily because the dividends being reinvested. Now let's get into why should you invest in index funds. We talked about active investing and passive investing. Let's take a look at what have been what has been the performance of actively managed funds. According to SNP uh, SPIVA report, uh, more than 90% of actively managed investment funds have given returns below than index funds. Think about it. To put simply, you would have ha you would have made more money had you invested in an index fund rather than paying fees to an investment professional to manage your money. Now, 90%, that is a US data point. According to Motilal Oswal in India, about 70 to 75% of actively, fund, actively managed funds give higher than market returns. Meaning, uh, if you invest using an actively managed fund through an investment professional, you are likely to get returns higher than the uh, index fund. Now, these are two very different data points, right? So do your own research, understand what you're going to, which path you are going to go and achieve your financial goals. What's key over here is you want to be financially independent by investing uh, your money in the, with the least amount of risk and least amount of effort. Unless you are an investment professional, 
you know, typical investment professionals that are part of the investment funds come from Ivy League. They are some of the smartest people in the world, right? So if they are spending their full time trying to get you uh, returns higher than the index fund, what makes you believe that if you invest based on your own research and analysis with the small amount of time that you have because you have a job or you're running a business or you're running a home, you're doing something, right? So what makes you believe that with your limited amount of time and research, you can do a better job than the index fund or the investment professional? Think about it. Your objective is to become financially free and not get caught in this competitive space. There are a few more reasons why you should uh, invest in index funds. Uh, one is uh, low risk uh, and it's easy to invest in and you remove any kind of human biases. Uh, the risks are finite because you're essentially saying you're going to invest in the top 50 companies or the top 100 companies that the country has to offer, right? That the stock market has to offer. So you're kind of averaging it out. And so uh, there's no need of, you know, research, analysis, betting on certain stocks doing better than the others, right? A lot of decision making is removed from the, uh, from the investing uh, mode, right? Um, the second part of this is uh, taxes. You know, if you keep buying and selling, uh, then uh, that is going to result in small percentage in taxes. And so all of these small percentages add up over a period of time. Whereas if you invest in index fund, you're kind of investing over the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years, right? And so you're not doing a lot of buying and selling, hopefully. So uh, if that is the case, you can save on some percentage points in your taxes as well. Uh, lastly, an actively managed fund is run by humans, right? Uh, and humans have biases and they have a certain conditioning. And so they bring those biases and conditioning uh, when they are selecting what stock to invest in, when should they sell uh, a stock, uh, how much should they sell, uh, and all of these biases play a part, which may not result in them beating uh, the index fund or the market, right? And so these are a few reasons why you should invest in index funds. When should you invest in index funds? Let's try and break down this topic. You know, there's no universal uh, time to invest in index funds, right? Common sense tells us that you should buy when the price is low and you should sell when the price is high. Thereby, you'll get highest returns. Uh, but unless you have a crystal ball, uh, you don't know uh, when the market is going to be low and when the market is going to peak, right? If you knew, you could have just put in all your money in March 2020 when the stocks tanked and today you could have been financially independent or really filthy rich. But unless you have a crystal ball, here's what people do or people like me do. You should let compounding uh, take over. You know, compounding is considered the eighth wonder of the world. What compounding essentially tells is when you start investing uh, and over a period of time, you get an exponential return. Your amount of wealth increases exponentially. To share an example from uh, an article from New York Times, here's a graph that you can see. Imagine you invested $5,000 uh, to get 6% annual return and you started at the age 22 and a second person started investing the same amount with same returns at the age 32. After 10 years of investing, can you believe that the amount that a 22 year old makes is almost twice that of uh, the 32 year old. Now, this is the magic of compounding. You can really, really let uh, time help you create wealth and generate wealth. So how can you get started by investing in uh, index funds? Uh, it's really simple. You know, you can go on popular platforms like Zeroda, ICICI Direct. You can buy an index fund as a mutual fund. Uh, or you can buy it as an ETF, exchange traded uh, funds. But I think the approach towards how to invest in index funds is more important, which I'm going to cover right now. Uh, there are two main methods by which you can invest in uh, index funds. One is called dollar cost averaging. What it essentially means is that you're doing a systematic investment plan. You're investing a fixed amount of money on fixed dates. 
say for example you invest 10000 rupees on the 5th of every month uh, for the next 10 years uh, by doing this you have automated the process you have removed uh, the anxiety of when to buy um, how much to buy and all of that right uh, so dollar cost av averaging essentially uh, removes all the biases and the fluctuations from your investing approach the second approach is called lump sum investing say you get a uh, get a bonus uh, at the end of the year and you've got a lot of money uh, that you want to invest in an index fund uh, when you invest all of that amount in one go that is called lump sum investing or you could do what i said before dollar cost averaging you could take that bonus and invest it in uh, monthly over the next 12 months right uh, you know the experts are split in what approach is the best uh, a, a 2016 vanguard uh, study uh, going all the way back to 1926 on investing in index funds obviously this is the us index funds uh, this study has shown that uh, uh, lump sum investing if you've invested at the bottom of the market gives you higher returns than dollar cost averaging now um, i fall on the side where you know dollar cost averaging is a lot easier because i don't have to think uh, i know how much money is there uh, that i need to invest and i just want to remove the anxiety of trying to time the market right and so these are the two different ways by which you could invest in index funds a critical factor that you need to understand about uh, investing in index funds uh, is expense ratio. What is expense ratio? It is the cost of owning the fund. There are people who are managing the fund. In the case of mutual fund, the fund manager has to buy and sell stocks. So clearly the expenses are much higher than an index fund where everything is pretty much sorted by the National Stock Exchange. So over here, uh, to give you a, a comparison, you know, according to Zeroda, uh, the expense ratio of a large cap mutual fund in India is about 1.31%, whereas that of uh, the expense ratio of an index fund in India is only 0.3%. You know, it, you might say, well, 1.3% and 0.3%, that's not a huge, uh, huge percentage difference. But when you compound it over 20 years, that is a lot of money that you've given to the fund manager. Here are some uh, graphs that you can take a look at about HDFC index fund, which is in the SNP BSE Sensex direct plan. And here's the one for UTI Nifty 50 index fund uh, on the growth part. Let's take the example. Suppose you invested 10,000 rupees each month uh, for the last 10 years in the SBI Nifty Index Fund. Your total amount that you invested would be 10 lakh rupees. Uh, today the value would be 23.4 lakh rupees, giving you annualized returns of 12.85%. Not bad considering you haven't done any research, you haven't done any analysis, you've just put in money month after month um, and you've made and created wealth for yourself. Most financial planners and investors will tell you that you should invest at least some part of your uh, wealth in index funds. It is one of the lowest cost and cheapest way, easiest way, safest way to create wealth. Morgan Housel in his book, The Psychology of Money has clearly stated that a majority of your wealth should actually be invested in low cost index funds. Now these guys know a lot about money. Uh, they've managed huge amounts of money. So there has to be some reason why they are saying invest in index funds. Many financial planners will even tell you that if you are investing in your kids education for the next 10 years, 15 years or investing uh, for your retirement, maybe index uh, funds are the best vehicle for you to invest to achieve those financial goals. The purpose of this video is to bring awareness about index funds. I know you have a lot of questions. Do me a favor, put your questions down in the comment section. If you've liked what I have shared and you've found even one insight in this video, please subscribe to this channel, like and share with people you care about. 
my focus is solely to help people become financially free so that they don't take up jobs that they don't like and they are doing things that are most meaningful to them i hope you will join me in in this cause of mine to make people financially independent by bringing about awareness thanks